now's the time we should be. So, so now's the time is early fall, right. getting into into fall. Right. So now, obviously, fescue, fescue Preceding is seeding fescue. Fescue is uh, it, it's it's fescue time. Right. Uh, we're about to get into that. You know those those state fair times when when we usually will break that that summertime pattern where we get out of the 90 degrees, uh, we start getting a little moisture, the nights are cooler, they're getting longer, so that's a perfect time to start seeding fescue. Well now we, we say reseeding fescue, and I know this is a common question that comes into the diagnostic center. People say, every year I seem to have to reseed my fescue. What am I doing wrong? Yeah. They're not necessarily doing anything wrong. They're not. I mean, it, it, we talked about tomatoes last week as job security for right. us. Fescue's <laughs> another one of those Fescue's job security <laughs> for us as well. Right. Um, <laughs> You know, what happens, we, we seed in the fall, right. and the plant grows all winter, does good, does its thing, uh, when there's not many leaves on the tree, so we can get some sunlight through those limbs. Uh, it's continuing to grow all winter, and then it kind of slows down once those leaves and it starts getting warmer. So what's happening, a couple things there. Uh, the leaves get on the trees, blocks the sunlight. Right. That's gonna shut things down a lot. Um, and the temperatures, once we start getting high, uh, higher temperatures in the higher mid 80s, 80s uh, to even 90s to 100, that plant shuts down. And if we haven't done our due diligence that we're going to talk about, uh, then that plant really won't won't stand a chance to survive that June, July, and August time frame. So that's really the ticket when we're talking about fescue is to prepare that grass, that plant for those stressful months of June, July, and August. Well, and, and it's known as a cool season grass. It's not necessarily something that's, that's meant to be June, July, August Correct. grass. It's really meant for a cool season grass, but not really, I don't know that there is a grass, I mean, people say, well, I like it for the shade. Well, it does better in the shade than Bermuda does, but every they all need it sunlight. It all needs sunlight. Right. And if we're not getting you know enough sun, it's gonna, it's not gonna survive. It's right. gonna be very thin, it's gonna look bad, it's gonna get disease. Um, so, you know, that's one thing that we, one of the questions we get a lot is why can't I grow my grass in the, in the shade? Or my fescue's looking bad, we'll get those calls May, June, July, and then it'll take me about 20 minutes to describe, you know, kinda, well, it's not getting enough light, so we can limb up the trees to, you know, right. bring up those limbs higher where we can get some light in there. But a lot, you know, we love our trees too, so okay. they're competing. They're, they're competing with each other. So, you know, if we try it year after year, do the correct things, fertilize water, the correct amount of seeds um, year after year, and we still fail, then, you know, fail as far as growing underneath our trees or in a shady area, then I, I recommend people putting in a, a, a garden or a bed or a rock garden or something. <laughs> or mulch. Or mulch, something besides, <laughs> right. besides fescue, because right. it's just not gonna Because every year you're probably gonna have to reseed. That's, that's to right. Bring it back up to where it was and then that's, do it again. That's right. So specifically on reseeding, so you know now is a perfect time before we do that is to get a soil sample. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll talk about soil samples later and nutrients involved later in, in different podcasts, but basically you, you want to get in there and see if we need to adjust our pH. So you can bring a soil sample into any county office, county extension office. Uh, it'll take about 10 days, two weeks to get the results back. So if you bring them in to tomorrow, uh, we can get them back in 10 days. And then by then it's, it's you know, you can put that, put that lime on there to adjust the pH or sulfur to adjust. And then, then that should get us ready to start seeding. So That's a whole other podcast. It is. We'll but talk it, about soil testing. But it's important to get it done right. and, and get it done before we go ahead and put that seed down. But if not, if we're a little late, we can always come back and do it later. It's not going to hurt anything. So whether you got your soil test or you didn't get your soil test, I mean, what do you do? How do so, you do? so cultivar. Cultivar is the first thing. You know, there's lots of brands out there, lots of marketing companies out there that you know, are selling, tur you know, fescue seed. Right. Um, the, you know, and they all work well. Um, they all work good. Um, you know, there's not one brand that's necessarily better than others. Uh, what I tell people is go find a good quality turf type tall fescue seed. Right. Um, you know, don't buy the cheapest, but you don't necessarily have to buy the, the coated seed that's three times as expensive also. Right. It comes in a little bag. A li a, yeah, a little bag and, and right. uh, so yeah, I mean you don't, you don't, that's, 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 people get bogged down on that, right. you know, the cultivars. It's, it's important, but it's not that important. 
uh, as you know what we're finding now we're seeing mixtures of, of five or six or five or six different types three to five different types so you know for instance five star five star has five different cultivars in there so if one fails then others will take over and do fine so that's not a bad not a bad plan is to have more than one cultivar in a in a mix or in a bag of seed so the first point buy a mix buy, make sure the seed you're getting is a mix of different seeds not just one particular seed because you don't know if that one particular seed is going to thrive in your sun and in your light and in your water in your yard where the other might and we can kind of take it further as a blend we can we can use fescue and we can also use bluegrass right. bluegrass we don't have good luck having a hundred percent bluegrass in our area Kansas City and up north do a pretty good job growing bluegrass but where we use bluegrass is in a blend of that fescue so not only do we have different fescues but we have different species in there as well again a cool season bluegrass is a cool season just like fescue is mm -hmm. and it's pretty compatible they look very similar so we can you know if a disease disease gets in fescue it can and it doesn't attack bluegrass it can kind of mask that disease a little bit uh, so a good blend with fescue and a little bit of bluegrass maybe 10 percent of bluegrass uh, can can work pretty well but but again we, we've really spent a lot of time on cultivars and we don't necessarily need to we just need to find a good quality turf type tall fescue whether it's a blend right. with bluegrass or not. Right, now I know <clears throat> when you go out and see it, look at the bags, if you are reading those labels to see exactly what you're getting, you'll see a PLS. What, what's that PLS mean on there? Pure live seed. Pure live seed. So, so every bag of seed that we buy will have a seed label, just like a fertilizer, just like a bag of fertilizer has what's in it, right. uh, or a pesticide has what's in it, the right. seed has what's in it. So it'll have germination rates, uh, that good quality will will have a high germination rate. It'll be a fresh seed they just harvested this year. Um, it'll have you know it'll be in the 90s. It'll be a germination rate in the 90s. Right. It'll also tell us our weed counts, our weed seed counts, or other materials. Other materials could be rock, sticks, stones, that sort of stuff. But it'll also have material uh, weed materials. Noxious weed they have to test for noxious weeds seeds. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll say in that most every one will have zero on that higher end quality seed but it'll also have different weeds other weed seeds there so it may have 0.5 they don't necessarily identify that weed seed but the lower that number the better off so if I had two bags some had weed seeds and some didn't of course I'd choose the one that didn't right. but but that seed label is the law to have on there and, and you may have not ever noticed it before but read right. that label and, and see well, what's you know in what it. you're getting see anyway. yeah that's right you know another question we always get I have some seed left over from last year two years ago is it any good good question good question so you know one thing we can we can actually germinate those in a wet paper towel and see or simply throw it out and see if it works and if it does does great if it not we'll reseed that's probably the best plan that's the easiest try it plan and see if yeah because they, they pop up pretty quick yeah You'll it does quick. about five you know five to eight five to ten days you know if we keep right. it moist is about how long it'll take um, right. so it, it won't take you long and it won't you won't be out of the window uh, on seeding but you know that that's that cultivar is is pretty important another thing we mess up on is amount of seed mm -hmm. I recommend about five to seven pounds on a new lawn or a lawn that doesn't have a lot of per uh, thousand square feet. per thousand, per thousand, thousand square, feet. square feet good point so uh, per uh, five to seven pounds per thousand square feet on a blank lawn or a lawn that's pretty thin and you know a lot of times homeowners say well or, and I'm guilty as as well you're not I'm sure no. but if a little works then just put a lot on there to look better right not necessarily good not good at all for fescue seed uh, what happens we can make a beautiful lawn in about 30 days by putting a lot of seed out there it'll germinate and grow and you'll start mowing and it'll look carpet it'll look perfect but what happens when as they start needing to grow and spread out they're they're competing with each other so they're growing side by side and they can't spread out so you've got two weak plants side by side that's going to end up dying later on versus if we had one plant in there it's going to be able to grow and spread out and and get thicker and then not only are we looking at the tops but underneath the ground that we're seeing right. those roots aren't in, having to compete with nutrients moisture things like that so the less the better on on fescue seed on the amount five to seven pounds so we say five to seven pounds per 
thousand square, square feet. feet. And people are like, well, how am I supposed to know that? And yeah. at least my experience is, well, you can step off a thousand square feet, put measure out that poundage for your uh, spreader, and, yeah. and then see how it goes. See yeah. if it covers the hole or if you've got too much. Or you, and then you can adjust it, kind of hone that in, so yeah. then you know the rest of your view yard. You're applying it at the proper rate. That's correct. And sometimes and it'll say on the hor- back. Horseshoes and hand grenades close enough. <laughs> um, you don't want to put 15 pounds. 10 right. pounds is getting a little high. Thin on the thin side, three to five pounds. I mean, right. a lot of times homeowners aren't going to have problem putting two less. But, you know, you know, as long as you get around that five to seven pounds, what I do on my backyard, I know that it's 8,000 square feet. Right. Uh, I've measured it, and I just know my yard is that size. So, so I'll know thinking it through. Five pounds times, you know, a thousand pounds, a thousand uh, square feet. Square feet. So five times eight, forty, forty pounds. So I'm going to need about forty pounds, forty to fifty pounds. So I'll buy a bag of 50, a fifty pound bag, and I'll spread basically that whole bag of seed. I may keep a little in case I don't you know cover some areas right but uh that's that's how i look at it so once you figure that footage you whether you walk it off or just ballpark guess it right. that that's going to be close enough right yep so that that's the amount um getting the seed bed ready uh you know the good thing is that we need good soil to seed contact so that means if we can get in there and till it hey we've got a perfect soil to seed contact but a lot of times in yards we don't want to do that so right. a simple especially for reseeding that's right a simple raking whether we power rake it or we you know we go in and scalp it and and try to take as much foliage off as we can um, where that seed touches that soil it's going to stay moist longer uh, it's going to germinate quicker versus landing on a, a bunch of grass or things like that, whether it's dead or living. That seeds up above the ground, it's going to dry out. Or quick. leaves. Or leaves. Or leaves. It's just yeah, going to sit there. It's that's not right. Going. It's just not going to stay moist. And it's not going to germinate. Right. So if we can we can get that seed bed ready, the more we put into that bed, the better success we're going to have it to germinate. Proper preparation. It, it, that's <laughs> it. So yeah, that that's it. And then then what we've got to do after we seed it, we've got to keep it moist. Um, that's very essential. And like we mentioned earlier, um, five to 10 days, it's going to germinate. So if we keep it moist for five to 10 days, once we start getting it up, those roots are going down also. And that's our goal is to get those roots uh, down where they can start pulling up moisture. The quicker we can do that, the quicker we can start letting that thing grow and shut off the water. So at the beginning, you water in Couple times a day. Couple times a day during the during the ninety degree days, eighty degree days, and then you know in the seventies once we once we moisten that soil, it's going to have a lot. So it may be every two days right. in the se- in, with temperatures in the seventies. So uh, it just depends on the weather, on the soil conditions, things like that. Um, but again, it just as long as it's it's moist, then then we're okay, then we're good. Keep it moist until we can kind of reach that mowing height, about you know two inches, three inches, and then once. Once we reach that mowing height, we don't have to water as much. We can almost shut our water off during the fall. I say that to people and they, they think I'm crazy because they think fescue needs a lot of water. Well, the, mo- the, the temperatures are low, the, di- the nights are getting longer, so it's not like a summertime or a springtime uh, air time where we have to have to keep moisture there to keep something. It's not getting beat up every it, day. It's <laughs> not. It's not hot. Right. So we won't usually have to water um, during the fall. We can shut our irrigation system off. Now there we may get days where you know months where we dry out and have haven't had moisture in two or three weeks. Right. Then we may have to supplement that. But right. uh, for the most part, shut that water off. Save that water bill until later on into June, July. Right. So don't overseed. Use it at the proper rates, keep it moist, uh, prepare the seed bed before you do all that, and uh, you should be good. Start watering and go with it. And um, just know you're going to do it again next year. And the one, like the one, eh, no, because they're doing it right the first time and it's going to work. So it's not going to die June, July, and August. All right. Yeah, you right. Heard it, you heard it from him. <laughs> one, uh, one other trick that come to mind is, is removing the leaves that fall from the tree. Oh. Very important. We need to get after you've seeded. After fresh you grass. seed, so you're seeding in September and October. Right. We're growing in October. We've still got leaves on the trees. We're germinating, uh, getting it growing, right. and then all of a sudden fall comes uh, heavily, and then winter comes. And then we lose our leaves. So the leaves fall on top of that. Well, that's blocking a lot of sun, a lot of growing conditions, things like um, you know. So it's blocking light, blocking moisture. So if we can either get in there and mulch them real well and get them down 
past the leaf canopy or simply vacuum them up and get them off there make them you know compost them uh, get them get them off there so that that'll help allow that that grass blade that plant to really grow and stretch and get there well and plus they're fresh and new and tender they, they can't take much can't handle much yeah can't so handle you, much. They, it's better get those leaves off there let them get some sun and yeah yeah don't put them in the landfill put them in your compost bin that we'll talk about or mulch them in or i just mulch them, mulch them in, in and go. Yeah. I mean, we've got so many trees in our yard and people say no you can't mulch those you, you can mulch them in and they you, just disappear you can and another thing that you know the nutrients if we keep mulching those in and not removing the leaves when we mow yeah, the the grass clippings right. it'll add fertilizer to our to our soil so we don't have to fertilize as much so we like that definitely right well i believe it's dr zang over at osu he says that uh Cow manure and leaves has the same amount of nitrogen in them, both about 1% of nitrogen, which doesn't seem right. It's crazy. It is crazy, but you are, when you're, I mean, that's how it works out in, the, out in nature. Yep. In the forest, they refertilize themselves from the yep. nitrogen. Yep. Uh, and, and, it, and it works well. And, yeah. it, and it works well. All right. So I think good. We, I think good. We've covered reseeding. We hit that. We hit that. <laughs>